Hi everybody, I'm Jeff with Virginia Paranormal Investigations, and thank you for tuning in for this edition of the VAPI Toolbox. Today, we're going to show you how to compile a basic starter kit for ghost hunting. We're going to go inside a Kmart and show you some tools that you can find in an average, everyday retail store. So come on, let's take a walk inside, and we'll show you what you can get to put in your toolbox. So one of the most important things that you can add to your toolbox are fairly cheap is going to be a digital voice recorder. And here at Kmart, they have this RCA model with a two gigabyte built-in memory. Um, it records for 800 hours on a set of batteries. And uh, it looks like it's a fairly good, um, fairly good voice recorder. Um, we haven't ever tried out the RCA, but it's certainly cheap enough, 35 bucks. So you really can't go wrong with this. And um, it, um, it'll get, it has the built-in software, of course. Um, so and you can share things um, via email if you have a Wi-Fi connection. So um, it's actually um, probably worth trying out at $35. Um, a lot of the other ones that you're going to find are going to be a lot more expensive. So uh, this is a good basic digital voice recorder and it should get the do job done. One thing they do have here also is a plethora of cameras. Uh, we have some GoPro cameras. There are some regular digital cameras. You can get them on sale for as low as $99.99. And this Canon PowerShot camera, I always recommend going with Canon. They've worked really well for us. We've gotten some good results with Canons. And this is a really good price for this. So another very important tool to have in your toolbox is just a basic digital camera. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need anything with all these options and bells and whistles. Just a basic camera to catch pictures of your evidence and of your location and to document any of your findings uh, that you may encounter while you're out on a paranormal investigation. These GoPros are good because you can use them hands-free. They have different brackets and such that you can attach them to your head and everything. And uh, you can go through your location basically hands-free. They do, however, have an upgrade which has night vision. Uh, so for certain locations, certain investigations, you may want the night vision, though it's not necessary if you have a flashlight. So here we have a selection of flashlights, and the flashlight is going to be the most basic tool that you'll want to add to your toolbox, but it also happens to be the cheapest. So it may be one of those situations where you want to buy two or three different flashlights for different situations. Now the, the reason I say that is because you want, might want a basic flashlight that gives you um, a high amount of lumens that you can carry around that's really going to light the area up. Um, and we have um, tried this Energizer before. Um, unfortunately, we weren't too happy with it because it doesn't seem to, it has, seems to have something wrong inside there. And um, not long after I purchased it, it stopped working on me. So, um, but we have a variety of Craftsman flashlights up here as well. Now, um, the Craftsman flashlights are, of course, good quality. Um, you have to watch the lumens because certain ones, um, like this is a fairly good sized um, uh, flashlight unfortunately only has about 160 lumens. You can find flashlights that are this size that give you up to 250 to 75 lumens. So, um, but it's probably a very durable flashlight. Um, you don't want to go too big because you want to be able to take this thing and put it in your pocket as well. Now, some of the other flashlights that they have here are these mag lights. Um, these are the six inch mag lights. Uh, they don't have a very high amount of lumens. I think it's only like 14 or 15 lumens, but these are the ones that you want to use for your flashlight sessions. You rotate the end of it until it's just barely off and set it onto a shelf and ask questions and see if the, um, see if the entity or a spirit is that, that may be there will respond using these things. And they're made in the USA. Right, that's exactly true. Which is one true. good thing that I like yes. about mag light. Another good thing that is good to have are these here. Um, these are one of these sticks that just kind of light up. This particular one doesn't appear to be working. But these are good because they usually come with a, um, a lanyard or some sort of a, um, a uh, I don't know, an attachment of some sort that you can take it and attach it to your body and it'll light up the environment. And so it's kind of hands free. So this is always a good thing to have. But as you can see, there's a variety of flashlights. 
Um, if you can find uh, the one that I carry is a Coleman brand flashlight and that particular flashlight has 250 lumens. It's small. It's uh, not a whole lot bigger than the mag light here. It comes with um, the little cord attachment so that you can loop it around something and make it hands-free and um, so far I've been extremely pleased with the Coleman brand and I believe that that one I got on sale for about ten dollars so it was well worth it. They also have a variety of headlamps, um, which are very good because once again, hands-free, uh, wherever you're looking, that light is going. And they have these ones that we haven't tried, but they clip on the brim of your hat, uh, which is pretty cool because once again, it's hands-free. A lot of times with the headlamps, you gotta turn your hat backwards or take your hat off to use them because the peak gets in the way. Um, but with these, they clip right on the front there so you can keep your hat on and wear it like you normally would. Uh, another thing I'd like to mention about the lumens is we do see some like this one's only 39 lumens. You got to think about what you're doing. You got to think about the location. Um, for outdoor locations, for bigger locations that may have long dark hallways and such, you may you may want a more powerful lumen to, to light up the area to see what's around you uh, for walking around and seeing where you're going. Now when you're actually doing the EVP session or you're looking at your temperature gauge or monitoring your equipment during the investigation and not so much wandering around, you might want a lower lumen so that your night vision doesn't get killed uh, as you're looking at the equipment and you can still have situational awareness for what's going on around you. So it's good to have a variety. Uh, if you have one that can adjust, that can do uh, like different levels of brightness, that's awesome. There's a couple flashlights like that here. I really highly recommend the Die Hard. I've had this flashlight right here. It's 100 lumens. It's a good um, good level of brightness. You can adjust it to be more of a floodlight or more of a focused beam, and it's very durable. I've had it for a couple years, and it, it works very well. So that is one that I definitely recommend. This is another item that you can add to your toolbox, and uh, it's not very expensive. It's only $50. Um, we have not tried the particular Brinkman brand, but uh, as you can see, this floodlight is one of those that um, has extremely high lumens, 1625. So this will really, really light a place up. Now, where this can be good is a couple of situations. First of all, when you're riding down a dark road and you're looking for perhaps um, abandoned houses or abandoned locations, ruins and things, if you're looking for that sort of thing, this will be able to shine down into the woods, down dark lanes, and um, will be able to um, show you anything that might be hidden in the darkness. Um, another reason why this might be good is um, on investigations, um, if you're at a large location, um, you may be able to take this thing and light up um, across large fields. If, you, if the, in, in the particular case of like Fort Mifflin, where we're going to be going in July, um, this, this is going to be a handy device because we can actually keep an eye on distant locations with this. Um, and, um, and Fort Mifflin is a huge place, so uh, this, this will come in very, very handy. One thing that's good to have for your toolbox is an actual toolbox to carry your equipment in. Um, they have a variety of sizes, just a simple basic plastic craftsman toolbox is always good. Uh, as you acquire more equipment, um, it's good to have something a little bigger like this. It has several drawers in it, has the top where you can store more stuff and you can store your tools, you can store your flashlights, your EMF detectors. It's got a bigger space down here where you can put your power converters and uh, whatnot. So, this is one area to consider if you're looking for a toolbox to store all your tools for ghost hunting. Uh, also, this is a pretty handy thing right here that I'd like to show you. And this, it has a top that pulls out. And uh, it's actually on wheels, so you can pull it along with you. But you can put a plethora of equipment in here. The sides just pop down like this. And uh, you open it up. We got this that comes out. It can hold some cords and stuff like that. You can put some bigger stuff down beneath. So definitely a good thing to have for paranormal investigations. Brought to you by Craftsman. So here we have a selection of other um, items that may, may be very good for your adding to your toolbox. And they're not very expensive. Um, this particular, uh, this is a thermometer and a humidistat and it is brought to you by Accurite 
Now, uh, this particular one we've seen online being sold as um, a, a thermometer made particularly for ghost hunting. Now, the good features of this one are that not only does it give you the humidity uh, level up at the very top, um, but it gives you the high and the low humidity level. It also gives you the, the temperature down here as well as the high and low temperature. So it records what the highest and lowest temperature within a room is. Now, um, this is a, a very handy one, very small. It clips onto whatever you want it to clip onto. Uh, doesn't take a lot of batteries, so it is a good one to have at $10.49. Yes, it also has a magnet on the back too. Does it? So Yeah, so uh, the clip on the back, if you, if you don't want to clip it to something you can right. magnet it if there's a magnetic surface you can right. stick it to that okay cool. um and you can look kick the little kickstand out and kind of rest and it on that it as, as well a, yes. so very very versatile little thermometer very handy right i usually clip it on my pocket oh okay. you know and walk around from yeah. room to room and, and yeah take That's it off good. accordingly now the other ones are worth mentioning because these have a wireless sensor and what you can do is you can take the wireless sensor, put it in a different room. In the case of this particular ther thermometer, uh, that is $20.99. If you look at the back here, you can see that this thing has a 330 foot wireless range. That's a hell of a wireless wow. range. Um, it does read an indoor and an outdoor temperature. So it will read the temperature of the location where the actual thermometer is sitting. And it will also read the location of the temperature where the sensor is as well. So if you take this sensor and put it in a different room 300 feet away, you're going to be able to read the temperature for both the room that the thermostat is in as well as the room that is far away. That's awesome. Yes. Monitor yes. two areas at once. Right, exactly. And again, this one also does high and low temperature. It gives you the date and the time as well. So that can be handy. Awesome. The last thing that may be handy to have in your toolbox, a uh, basic toolbox, is a compass. Uh, you can get a basic Coleman compass right here, which is a pretty nice one, flips open. Uh, it's got the little scope on there and such for if you're going to be shooting azimuths and stuff like that. But uh, we're not using it for direction. We're going to be using this in place of an EMF detector because the same uh, field that will set up the EMF detector will also make the compass go a little haywire uh, when the levels are high and it may detect a spiritual presence. And once again, before leaving the camping aisle, take a look because they have another variety of flashlights, headlamps, uh, baseball cap lamps, and here's the Coleman flashlight that Linda was talking about, which is a really good one, and it's on sale right now for $23.84, which is a pretty good price for such a flashlight because it has worked pretty amazingly uh, you would agree. Right, right. Uh, I did get it quite a bit cheaper than that when I bought it, but I think that it was actually on a clearance somewhere. So, um, but 23 bucks, it's definitely well worth it um, to have a flashlight that is 250 lumens and that is easy to carry and it's a good branding. So on the way out, we stopped by the men's apparel department, and here we have belts and wallets. You may wonder, what are we doing with the belts and wallets, and how's that going to help us in ghost hunting? Well, what may help us in ghost hunting is, taking us back to the early 90s, a fanny pack. And uh, I particularly like this one, because for one, you know, you put it on, and you can hold all your, not all your equipment, but a lot of equipment in there, at least your basic equipment. It's got this little pocket in the front right here where you can put a camera in there. It can fit a digital camera just about perfectly. You know, it's got a larger pocket back here where you can drop your EMF detector, maybe your thermometer in there. Um, it's got a little pocket on the front here where you can put some extra batteries. You can also put some extra batteries in here. So it's a very handy little bag. And like I said, as retro as it is, or as um, maybe 90s type fashion, uh, I'm thinking about bringing it back and carrying this with us on some investigations. So, another thing that you could add to your toolbox. So, what did we spend? We spent $100 for a camera, $35 for a voice recorder. Right. About $10 for a compass, $10 for a thermometer. Right, and then the flashlight. And about $10 for a flashlight, depending on what flashlight you're getting. Right. Okay, so about $165 you can compile right. a starter ghost hunting kit. Yes. 
And like I said, this is excluding any bells and whistles and you know any kind of high-tech equipment, just yes. basic equipment that you would need to capture evidence. Right, right. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in for this edition of the VAPI Toolbox. Until next time, I'm Jeff. I'm Linda. And thanks for watching.